Anthem 2, How Lovely Shines the Morning Star. Welcome to Anthem 2 in my attempt to write a new choir anthem every week for a year. I'm Kevin Mulrine, and I hope you will enjoy listening to my progress throughout 2024. Please do visit the website, anthem52.com, follow along on x.com, that's at realanthem52, and send me a message to show at anthem52.com. Week 2 and Anthem 2 has been hard, and contained multiple lessons for me, which I'll come back to later. But firstly, I decided I wanted to write an unaccompanied carol this week. Writing for a choir alone, rather than with piano or organ accompaniment, brings different challenges, as you can imagine. There's nowhere to hide. A bit like on a podcast or radio show, if you leave a gap, everyone panics and wonders where you've gone. See what I mean? Silence can be used to the composer's benefit, of course. And as you'll hear this week, it can be helpful to change key less abruptly, or for other effects. Voices singing a cappella, literally in the style of the chapel, has a certain purity. Presumably the very first music was for voices, and no instrument can come close to creating the same intimate feel as a choir. Of course, voices themselves are often used as accompaniment, and the middle section of Anthem 2 is an example of this but some of the most affecting choral music can be heard in the interweaving of independent parts or the slow-moving changes, tensions and releases created by more chordal arrangements of voices. As pointed out on the wonderful Choral Chihuahua podcast, slow-moving choral arrangements have been something of a trend over recent years, and I wonder how much of that is due to the relative ease of composing on a door, a digital audio workstation, with lush-sounding virtual instruments. When you play one of the choir plugins using a keyboard, it's fairly easy to work out a sequence of shifting, clashing, or complementary vocal parts. If the resulting music doesn't have to be sung by real performers, you don't need to be mindful of the restrictions of pitch, arrangement, or physical ability. That doesn't mean that I think all digital choir music is bad or lazy, but what I'm trying to do with Anthem 52 is to come up with pieces that can realistically be performed by a real practicing choir one which can still be found in many, but perhaps only now larger, parish churches in the UK. On to this week's anthem. I assumed, and there's my first mistake, that as it was Epiphany this week, the story of the three wise men visiting the stable would be an easy catalyst for a carol, in the same vein as the multiple Advent and Christmas carols I had produced before the turn of the year. I was wrong. I started out with the anonymous words to the carol, O star of Christ's appearing, which includes the enticing line, Surprise us still today. The music I came up with, though, just didn't flow, despite an amusing two-bar silence to make the surprising line more, well, surprising. I struggled on with it for several hours, feeling very uninspired. The carol originally started with what I thought was another good idea, a solo soprano evoking stars twinkling above a slow-moving, wordless accompaniment. It was okay, but everything I added felt contrived, or worse, tedious. I now realise, looking back over the week, that I was completely exhausted from the return to work and all the other things going on. This is an important lesson for me in creative terms. It's almost impossible to compose worthwhile music when your brain is tired. Another lesson was to abandon something which isn't working sooner. Abandon the carol I did, though, in the end, and settled on a completely different text, How lovely shines the morning star. In the end I only set the first verse, and here are the lyrics. How lovely shines the morning star, the nations see and hail afar, the light in Judah's shining. O David's son of Jacob's race, my bridegroom and my king of grace, for you my holy heart is pining. Lowly, holy, great and glorious, O victorious, prince of graces, filling all the heavenly places. As I gradually regained a little energy, things started to go a little bit better, but I still fell into a trap I know all about. It's vital to leave a composition and come back to it after a significant break. The music you hear when you return is often fresher and more interesting than your jaded view from looking at it and listening to it for an extended period. I was guilty of trying too hard to salvage something out of the week. The pressure I had exerted on myself to complete an anthem a week pushed me to keep working on the piece in stretches I knew were too long. 
Fortunately, coming back after a slightly better night's sleep this morning, I realised that what I had put together, through a lot of false starts, a lot of deletions, and a lot of trial and error, was actually worthwhile. I was fairly pleased with it. I'm also pleased I did have the confidence to throw in some more unusual harmonic shifts. As you'll hear, the piece starts in A major, I think, and then changes naturally to D major after only six bars. I don't think it's too abrupt. Later there is a brief hiatus, like I was planning for the abandoned carol, and another harmonic move when the voices reappear. Most surprising to me, however, is the middle section. I found when composing that unexpected things occasionally appear, unbidden, and this is a perfect example. You'll hear what I mean without having to look out for it, but it turned out to be a waltz-like passage with tune and vamping accompaniment. When I left the carol last night, I wondered if I would come back this morning and delete the section, finding it too twee, too banal, and out of place. But I actually ended up doubling it, and it seems to work. You may not think so, of course. Does the ending of the carol work? I'm not sure, but I think most of the anthems in this project will end up being first drafts, and I will enjoy coming back at the end of the year to edit and reconfigure, hopefully with a keener eye from the year of writing. Anyway, here is Anthem 2, How Lovely Shines the Morning Star, which I have converted into a video using the inbuilt capabilities of MuseScore, after an intervention by my daughter. This means less time used up with video editing and so on. So many thanks to her. You can watch the words going by on the embedded video on the show notes for Anthem 2 at anthem52.com. What do you think? Let me know on x.com, that's at realanthem52, 
as a comment in the show notes for this week at anthem52.com or via email show at anthem52.com. I'd like to thank my daughter, Charlotte, who has been doing some fantastic work for me as part of her college work experience. She's done some quick and detailed research and critiqued the Anthem 52 website, amongst other tasks. Well done to her. Also well done and congratulations to Paul Walton and Tim Popple, whose Kickstarter appeal to launch Desk Answer for Life, not just for Christmas, is now fully funded. It's clearly a collection people are very interested in. Finally, thank you to everyone who's been in contact this week in any way, including Jamie McQuinn, Greg Clinton and Bob Keeley. I hope you'll join me next week for a new episode and a new anthem. Only 50 to go now, but until then the question remains, will I make it to Anthem 52?